The 2000s was a phenomenal era for kids' movies, and this was largely thanks to the explosion of 3D animation that was largely spearheaded by Pixar Studios. Although these movies wouldn't truly find their feet until the 2000s, it began back in 1995, with the release of Toy Story becoming the first ever fully CGI feature-length film, and it was produced by Pixar and released by Disney. Toy Story was the earthquake that then caused a tidal wave of family entertainment that has continued to sweep through popular culture up until this day. It would also inspire other studios to pursue this newer form of animation, and by the turn of the millennia, these studios would begin seeing success in the world of 3D. DreamWorks had Shrek, Kung Fu Panda, How to Train Your Dragon, just to name a few. Blue Sky had the likes of Ice Age and one of my personal favorites, Robots. And later on in the 2000s and moving into the 2010s, we saw the rise of Illumination Studios, who've seen humongous success. Humongous? Humongous what? That's what it is. Humongous, humongous what? Humongous success with Despicable Me and the Minions, the Secret Life of Pets, and a number of Dr. Zeus adaptations. And of course, who could forget one of the greatest movies ever made? Not just the greatest 3D animated movie, one of the greatest movies, period. And it came from our friends over at Canbar Entertainment. You already know what it is. Hoodwinked. You just talked! Just now! Okay, so not everything from that era was a classic. There was... There was one or two misses, but the success of 3D animation was undeniable and what was quite niche a couple of decades ago is today worth hundreds of billions of dollars. Now all of the previously mentioned movies were great, they provided a lot of entertainment to a lot of people, but no one did 3D quite like Pixar. To say they went through a golden age is a bit of an understatement. Toy Story, A Bug's Life, Toy Story 2, Monsters Inc, Finding Nemo, The Incredibles, Cars, Ratatouille, Wall-E, Op. These guys were swinging and my god, they were not missing. I drop classics after classics after classics. <laughs> These were all fantastic movies. Very entertaining, wonderful to look at, but there was more to it than that. Pixar movies oozed a sense of soul. There was something intangible about them, a certain je ne sais quoi, an X factor. You know, in the 2000s, when you walked into a screening of the latest Pixar movie, it was an occasion. You know, one of those little uh, quirky little Pixar shorts at start, and then you knew that the next hour to two hours was going to be something special. Each movie had its own sense of style, whether it be the vintage futuristic 70s chic of The Incredibles, the exaggerated blobs of dough that were the characters you'd find cooking in the kitchens of Ratatouille. Funnily enough, exaggerated blobs of dough is a description that also works for Wally. <laughs> Got him! Sorry. But all of these movies were wonderfully original, yet still bared all of the hallmarks required in order to identify them as Pixar movies. I began watching Strange World the other day, and I say began because I just, I just couldn't finish it. It was fantastically monotonous, but that's not actually why I turned it off. There's one thing that I've not heard anyone mention about this movie, and it is that this is one of the ugliest Pixar movies I've ever seen. Granted, that's down to the aesthetic and art direction and not the fidelity of the visuals themselves and is therefore subjective, but it looks like they took Subnautica's DLC, googled the word trypophobia, and mashed it together, and they've created a world that looks something like whatever you'd see if you shoved a microscope up my colon. It's, uh, it's an uncomfortable experience for everyone. I have never turned off a Pixar movie because I just can't bear to look at it before. There's, Pixar don't do ugly. I mean, not up until this point. Anyway, like, their visuals are always so original and satisfying to look at. I mean, okay, a case could be made for Toy Story 1 being a little bit ugly, but that was the very first 3D animated movie. What's Strange World's excuse? Visuals are, of course, not the only area in which Pixar triumphed. Oh, no, no. Another aspect that helped to make these movies so iconic and cemented them in the minds of audiences everywhere was the music. Whether it be the jazzy musings of Randy Newman in Monsters, Inc. Or the bombastic fanfare that Michael Giacchino brought to the world of The Incredibles, which to this day is still one of my favourite movie scores. Or even the uplifting and equally heartbreaking nostalgic tones from Up. Even though these movies were made for kids and families, Pixar still approached all of these movies with the dignity and respect that the stories deserved, and it paid dividends. Children like myself, growing up in the 2000s, were given a collection of these 
timeless, wonderful movies, and Pixar cemented themselves as the kings of 3D animation. But more important than all of that is the foundations that these movies were built on. Their principles. I know I've been banging on about this a lot recently, but it's very important because your principles dictate your actions and therefore determine the impact you have on the world around you. And the same is true with movies. A Bug's Life taught us that failure isn't the be-all and end-all. There is something that lies beyond it. And if you're willing to look failure in the eyes and stand back up when it knocks you down, that something is most likely a better version of yourself that's capable of helping not only you, but those around you as well. Finding Nemo is an incredibly sobering tale about the beauty and strength of family. Another Dom Toretto type of family. Family, 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 family. It also teaches us that death might be guaranteed, but life definitely isn't. So spend the time that you have loving and protecting those around you. Ratatouille taught us that anyone can cook even if you're a French rodent that speaks in an American accent. And, and Wally, Wally taught us that we shouldn't be fat and be in space. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just, just completely undermined my own point there, sorry. These movies didn't approach you directly with these concepts though, it allowed you to infer them through the medium of art, music, and storytelling. And what's so powerful about these movies is that when you grow up, you don't grow out of them. You just learn to appreciate them in a new way because the principles and life lessons that they made you aware of, by this point you've learned and have probably exercised. And now, as an adult, rather than wisdom, these movies offer you a, a subtle wink and a friendly, I told you so. The 2000s Pixar movies had what you'd call soul. And when it comes to the more modern productions, I, it just seems absent. Now, I know that's not the most fair statement to make because what is soul? Like, there's nothing tangible about that. You can't quantify it. And, Fair enough, that is that is true. But as of late, watching Pixar movies, and I'm, I'm gonna generalize and say watching anything Disney, it's it's like having someone who doesn't love you tell you they love you. It's, um, it, it might seem nice, but they don't mean it. And you know, they're only saying it for their own benefit, not yours, it's, I, I'm very single. <laughs> Sitting here today, things are not as they once were when it comes to Pixar. And there are, there are a couple of reasons I wanna go over. And the first one, we've already kind of addressed. And this is the principles. The, the, the foundations that these movies are built upon. The older Pixar movies were based upon universal ideas, like love, strength, and courage. And that might sound cheesy, but these things are objectively a force for good. You never hear anyone making the argument that uh, you know, being courageous and compassionate is an evil and bad thing. No, but the when it comes to modern Pixar, the, the morality that it takes root in, uh, much like most of the entertainment that is currently under the watch of Disney, the morality it takes root in is beginning to slide. And we're beginning to move away from the objective and into the subjective. Take Strange World again. Jaeger is a fearless, manly man who's willing to push through certain death in order to discover a new world. You might think, wow, sounds great. I'm a manly man in a Disney movie, I thought they were extinct. Except the reason he's a fearless nomad is not because he's brave and wants to help single-handedly push humanity forward. It's because he's selfish and small-minded and is continually portrayed as such. The, the man, the manly man. Okay, Disney. If you build a house on top of flimsy foundations, it doesn't matter how nice your living room looks. You know, one way that Pixar could correct course is, you know, to stop pandering and just get back to honest storytelling. It's better for you, it's better for the audience. Everyone wins. Everyone wins. Another reason why I think that Pixar is starting to suffer in more recent years is limitations, or the lack thereof. Now you might have heard of the term, limitations breed creativity. And the premise basically explains that in a world with endless possibilities and no restrictions, that world is not as liberating as you might think it is. Having absolute freedom to do anything and everything opens the door to anything and everything. And infinity is not a concept that the human brain is known to deal with very well. Having too many choices is overwhelming and having no obstacles means that there's nothing to overcome. And these things can impact and in some cases completely destroy the creative process. With CG being so advanced and accessible these days, we just simply don't have the restrictions we once had. And in most ways, that's a good thing. But like back then, computers weren't as capable. So the time you had to animate and render was much more of a restriction. And you had to therefore had to use that time much more carefully. You're also much more limited to the kinds of materials you could physically animate. For example, the bane of a lot of animators' existences for the last couple of decades has been hair. It's a nightmare, an absolute nightmare to animate. But animators now have more freedom than they've ever had. They've essentially been handed a compass that points everywhere all at once. 
And understandably, they now don't know where they want to go. So unusually, my second suggestion for a course correction would be to limit yourself creatively in some way. Really hone in on an art style because movies like Strange World, are just, they're just a mosh with, with no real creative identity. And talking of art style, let's uh, quickly touch upon <laughs> the upcoming Pixar movie, Elemental. Now, it'll be, uh, I think it's released in July, I want to say, next month. Uh, now, I don't know if it's going to be any good, but it has, uh, it's premiered recently at the Cannes Film Festival and has been met with, meh, kind of a reception. I'll hold off any judgment until I see it myself, but one thing I can judge it on is the way it looks. And it looks very busy. Granted, this is once again entirely subjective, but I, I remember the first time I watched a, an advertisement for this movie. I was sat there watching it and um, I thought, oh, you know, it's another animated movie from, you know, a quirky little obscure studio. And I was then actually quite surprised to learn that this was a Pixar production. Maybe it's just me, but looking at this is sending my ADD through the roof. You know, don't get me wrong. I bet this was an absolute nightmare to render and they've probably used cutting edge effects but I just genuinely do not like looking at this. Is it just me? Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm just being unreasonable, but like, to me, it looks clumsy, weird, busy. Something hasn't quite clicked with the art style for me. But like I said, maybe that's just me. Let me know what you think. Also, the PR for this movie is, uh, it's not going too well uh, at the moment. Pixar's Twitter account uh, deleted a tweet that they put up the other day, and uh, here it is. Unleash your wildfire side with this burning red poster straight from Element City, hashtag Elemental. Now, some of my fellow British compatriots might be wondering what, what what's so bad about that, but for those who don't know, there have been a lot of wildfires spreading throughout Canada, and it's the smoke from those fires that you might have seen the images of New York recently looking like a crazy dystopian city. So wildfires are spreading throughout Canada and obviously are affecting people there, but are also affecting people in the US and Pixar are out here telling people to unleash their wildfires. <laughs> obviously there's nothing funny about wildfires and I don't think that Pixar were trying to poke fun at or mock people who were affected by these fires. I think that it was just a case of like one of the worst time tweets of all time. So, you know, wildfires, not funny. The timing of that tweet, Absolutely hilarious. And then on top of that, they've been having layoffs for the first time in, what, like a decade or something at Pixar. So uh, yeah, things are not looking too rosy for the once great studio. Will it correct course? Will things get better? I certainly hope so, but uh, you know, I'm, uh, I'm not holding my breath. I do appreciate you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. And as always, a big shout out to the most important people on this channel, the patrons and the channel members, the magnificent top tier members. Flunky, Pozzabon, Infinite Dum Dum, David, Jax, Koss, ATS, Texas Lawman, Michael, Steve the Goat, and David Chuchon. Who I think I actually messed your name up a little bit in the last video, so I do apologize about that. But my top tier members, you're the best. Really do appreciate you guys. Tier two, Saeed, Dr. Melski, Yonwich, Hadzi, Kenneth Dogramachi, Mark Maiden, Sensei Fang, Mendicum Bias, Dagger D69. Nice. Michael S, Saint Nemo, Rich Walwick, Madgar and Jarek, and Nystagmus. Thank you, each and every one of you. And of course, a thank you to all of the tier one members as well. To all of you who are a member of the channel or have joined the Patreon, I cannot thank you enough. Your support means the world to me. It really does. Thank you. And there we go. Another day, another video. Will you join me for my next one? You best do. You little bitch. But until then, take care of yourselves and I'll see you very soon. Enjoy your weekend, guys.